Ah, stack your shoulders in the house. How are you guys doing? Oh, me think I got part of my dinner on me. Sorry. <laughs> How's it going? Happy Labor Day. I hope you're having an exquisite day with your family or your friends. And uh, tonight's topic, I love tonight's topic. Easy peasy night tonight. The topic tonight is about getting your emotional needs met. Now, before I dive in, of course, I've got a few commercials, but I want to tell you I'm going to wrap tonight's session around wart medicine. Yes, wart medicine. I'm going to give you a very simple example with the steps that you're going to take to get some of your emotional needs met. And uh, I'll dive in in just a second. Let's do a couple of commercials, announcements to get us rocking. I see you guys are showing up. Hello, hello. Nancy's in the house. Connie's in the house. Becky, Keith, how are you doing? Um... Getting emotional needs met, first of all, got to thank General Motors. General Motors is one of our largest sponsors and champions of forgiveness in the workplace. And um, just huge shout out to General Motors for everything they've done for us, the contracts they've given us, how they've had us go to advocacy groups like veteran-owned businesses, WBEs, Women Business Enterprises, um, Asian Americans, African Americans, Latino, uh, organizations. They bring us to all those diverse advocacy groups that really are committed to making a difference and helping people in business. And General Motors has been a huge supporter. So huge shout out. Oh, people are saying hi. Or Nancy, I already love that you're welcome, welcoming Dolores. That was my next thing. If you're brand spanking new, you've never been here, say hey. Say hey, I'm new. Robin's brand spanking new. So welcome, Robin. We're so glad you're here. Um, Okay, uh, the, a couple of announcements. We have a Facebook group called Joy is a Habit. And one of our big promotions here at Project Forgive is Joy is a Choice. Doesn't mean that pain isn't real, your situation isn't real, the stuff you're dealing with is not real, and you, got, you need a reprieve from it at some point or another, right? You can't stay in pain 24 seven. That's just not a way to live. So the habit of creating and finding joy is a really cool, exquisite habit to make. So if you're inspired, join our group. For those that don't know, whatever I say tonight, I always put up notes. As soon as I'm done, I'll put the notes up so you don't even have to go look for stuff. I'll be right here. Look, everybody's already welcome. Sarah, yay, people are already welcoming people. That's awesome. Um, we always give away prizes at the end of this lecture. I always say 10 to 15 minutes, but I'm usually here for 30. That's usually what happens. Um, prizes tonight are, of course, our luxurious, exquisite, kindness is contagious face masks. We've got a black one, and <coughs> pardon me, and we've got a white one. And so, some lucky winner is going to win tonight. And the only caveat is you have to be in the U.S. to win. So I'll do that at the very end, as soon as I'm all done. Um, and also, too, please visit our swag. We get a lot of swag. We've got Forgiveness Essential Oil that's exquisite. We have uh, an apology necklace with part of a, that goes with the tool that we do called the Apology You'll Never Receive. And if you haven't been to one of our Zoom workshops, we just started that over the summer. We, the next one is September 29th. I'll put the link up for it. It is $6.99 off of Facebook. So you can register on Facebook, register on our website, and um, we do it in a Zoom because we actually do some work. It lasts about an hour and a half, and we do uh, the tool, the mastery tool of accepting the apology you'll never receive. It's a profound tool, and when you get really good at it, woo hoo hoo And here's the other thing, too. You will never be turned away if you don't have $6.99. We have scholarships from so many of our followers and participants that provide those and also the stars when you give us stars we use that for scholarships so don't ever let cost be a deterrent for coming to one of our workshops and um, even if we didn't have any of that available i'd take care of you i don't care it's just part of the deal right we are looking for sponsors for project forgives the apology workshop so if you know of a company that would be inspired by that let us know um what else let's see in my notes any other things I have to say? No, I think that's it. If you're new, tell us. I already said that. That's it for announcements. Okay, tonight's topic is getting your emotional needs met. And how I thought I would do it is I, I like to use the examples that I'm dealing with, right? Yeah, got you, Dolores. Just message us here. We'll take care of you. We'll get you the email. And actually, we'll put an email up here, which is joy at projectforgive.com and get you handled. It's no, no big deal. Okay? 
All right, I'm seeing people saying, Mastering the Tool, Mary, Mary Lucinda, that's awesome. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tool. Okay, great. Oh, Bonnie, thanks for saying the workshop. It is a lot of fun, isn't it? We always take on one specific topic and we play in that and you get to interact with others and then we do the actual tool. And it's about an hour and a half process. We started off with an hour, we realized and we were rushing. So it's an hour and a half. It's always gonna be on a Wednesday night, seven to 8.30 Eastern time. Okay, great. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna use wart medicine as the example tonight about getting your emotional needs met. Let me give you a couple of contexts for tonight's lecture and um, I'm gonna use wart medicine because it's a real thing in my house, okay? <laughs> I didn't ask my husband's permission, but if he asks, I'll tell him, but I'm just, you know, I'll ask for forgiveness later. Everybody gets warts at some point or another, don't we? And uh, we got a thing about the wart medicine. And so tonight's lecture and the communication tips and tools are more for those that you're close to. Maybe you live with them, you interact with them on a regular basis, your boundaries are being violated, you're not getting your needs met, how do you create, foster and create deeper intimacy so you're not fighting? Because here's the thing, you know, um, the wart medicine, right, here's the gist with the wart medicine. My husband's got a wart. <laughs> and he's doing really good with consistently putting medicine on it and putting these bandages on his feet or whatever he's doing. And the thing is though, I find the bandages all over the living room. He leaves his wart medicine with little like scissors, which is really creepy to me. <laughs> Forget, probably TMI. And he leaves them on the little like accent table in the living room and I'm like, no, 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 no. All right, well, I've been with this man for 25 years. Okay, really 30, because we dated for, well, 28. We have married for 25. We lived, we were uh, dating for three. And so I know that he's very different than me. I'm a list person, okay? Any other list people out there? He is not a list per person. He needs to physically see something for him to remember to do something, okay? So in his mind's eye, which I get, it needs to be sitting there on the little accent table so he remembers to take care of his wart, okay? Me, not so much because it creeps me out, okay? So that's the context. Now, the needs that he's meeting are, you know, it meets the immediate need of no creepy wart medicine stuff in the living room. You got it? Okay, so that gets handled when I address it. And it also meets another need. It meets the need of being heard, that I'm being heard, that I'm important, that he cares about what I feel and what I need. And I have an ongoing thing about common areas, like we keep the common areas clean. Okay, like you don't leave all your work stuff on the kitchen table because that's a common area. And, you know, we make some exceptions to the rule. If he's got to go be somewhere tomorrow morning, he doesn't want to forget something. He has to put it on the table or whatever. That's fine. But it's when stuff stays there for a day or two days or three days or four days where I just want to pull out my hair. Okay, I like a clean kitchen. Just, just what I like. So, of course, we're exact opposites in that. We do attract opposites, right? So this, back to this wart stuff, okay? So I'm like, you know, honey, I, I love you. And, um, you know, we've had so many conversations about common areas and we gotta do something about this wart stuff. Let me walk you through these five pieces. I got five little steps and how you can do this, okay? Because the whole goal is to give you some new tools that you can do it. The first thing is one boundary, one issue, one thing at a time. I'm a list person. I could go off, like my husband's painting the bathroom right now. I could go off on like 60 things that need to be done around the house. I know that he cannot, that is not how he's wired. That's not how he absorbs information. Never tell your husband when he's painting the bathroom that you also need the bedroom painted, okay? <laughs> Same is true but there's one thing that you need to talk about to get some needs matter, to set a boundary, one at a time. Let, the, let your, the person in your life digest one at a time. It's all good, okay? Sometimes we get very excited and we wanna get it all handled all at once. I like to check off my list. A lot of people don't operate that way, okay? I know that about my husband and you know that about the person in your life, how they operate. You've been, probably chances are you've been around them for a while, you kinda know how they operate. So one, topic at a time. 
The reason this is so hard for you, if you have more than one topic, is because it builds over time. Upsets compound. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I even started this lecture off with common areas. Like, that includes the bathroom, that includes the bottom of the steps, that includes the kitchen counter, the kitchen table, the foyer, there's a little accent table in the foyer. Like, that's something that comes up a lot, and it has for 25 years, okay? And my job, whether he's hearing me or not, is I, me, I want to be kind and loving about it, not bitter and angry and coming at him real harsh. You get what I'm saying? Harsh and anger to me are very different because you can be really angry and not be harsh and not attack the person's character, right? <laughs> I'm with you, Nancy. I'm with you. Um, and my husband does get overwhelmed. Exactly. And I, I don't get overwhelmed like that. I can work on 60 things at once. Him, not so much, okay? Um, and I'm not making this a male-female thing at all because I know a lot of men who operate like I do. It's really how we're hardwired, how we're created, or how we operate is our operating system and with our brains, okay? That's why it's one of the questions I put up earlier today, um, what's one personal development thing that you're working on? And someone put up, you know, I'm working on being less shy. And I thought, well, wow, that's an interesting conversation to work on being less shy because shy is like it's part of your character it's part, excuse me not character it's part of who you are and there's nothing wrong with who you are if you're shy it might be I'm working on this is what I thought the person's not wrong but this is just where I went it might be working on sharing 10% more than I normally do make sense Okay, because we're all made a certain way and we interact in certain ways, okay? I, for me personally, I'm a converted introvert. I used to be very introverted, especially as a kid, and converted that. Now I speak in front of thousands of people, so it doesn't mean I don't get scared, because I still do. And I've spoken to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in audiences. I still get scared, and I, I embrace that and love that about me, because I know that that's how I'm made. And there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you if you're shy. There's nothing wrong with you getting upset about something. It's the, the, the whole key here with the wart medicine is I want to stay aligned with my loving, kind, beautiful self, no matter what the circumstances are. Doesn't mean I don't get angry because I can be loving and kind and very angry at the same time. Okay? All right. Topic for another day. All right. So back to the wart medicine. First thing, one topic at a time. Number two. And for those just joining us, we're talking about getting some emotional needs met. And anything I mention, I will put in the notes as soon as I'm done, okay? Um, ask permission to have a vulnerable conversation. This, If you remember anything about this lecture tonight, asking permission to have a vulnerable conversation is exquisite frickin' gold. And it's going to be something like you say, you know, honey... I really want to share something with you and it has me feel a little bit raw or a little bit vulnerable and I'm wondering if you would be willing to listen for a few minutes and hold off giving me a response. That would mean the world to me. Would you do that for me? That whole permission thing is exquisite. It reminds me of, you know, like sometimes you get emails that you hate. You're like, how did you get my freaking email? It, it's non-permission based marketing. I hate when people get my email and email me stuff. I think it's very rude. And I don't like it. It's my private space. And stepping in that honoring space of permission-based requests, permission-based intimacy actually fosters intimacy. So if you don't remember anything else, remember that. Okay, ask permission. Like, I really want to share something with you. I've been kind of upset. I'm feeling uncomfortable about it, awkward about it. Would you be willing to listen to me for a few minutes? Perfect. Okay. Now, Number three, you ready? Number, oh, let me put up three fingers. <laughs> you wanna ask for what you want, say what you want, not what you don't want. Ask for what you want, not what you don't want. People respond much higher percentage when you ask for what you want rather than what you don't want. And if you, when you go into what you don't want, you actually, that's when you start feeling harsh. That's when you start feeling a little 
I'd use the B word, but I'm not supposed to swear on Facebook because I made it a <laughs> little um, itchy with a B, okay? <laughs> That's a good way to do it. Because if you start with what you don't want, let's go back to the wart medicine. Like, I don't want him to leave his wart medicine in the frickin' living room, okay? Oh, uh, you know what, Terry? The wart medicine is sitting there. I don't like that. How many times do I have to tell you I don't like that? That is not intimacy. That is not creating communication that fosters closeness. That's not how it works. It can be more like, you know what I really want, sweetheart? I know you know this about me. You know, I'm going into actual exa examples, okay? You know how, how, what a big deal common areas are to me and the cleanliness of clean areas. And, and he knows I'm not a clean freak. I just like clutter gone, okay? Just, I like clean spaces. Um, I just feel more restful, more peaceful. So I say to him, you know how restful and peaceful I feel. I'm in a happier mood. I'm, do, I'm better at self-care when the house feels a little more in order. Um, you know how I am about control. These are things we can control rather than things we can't, like the environment, climate control, racial disparity, politics. We can't control any of that. And you know how I am about having the, the, the home areas, the common areas really clean. And I've given this a lot of thought. I know how you are with wart medicine, and I know how important it is for you to put it on every day. I'm wondering if we can find a compromise because it's not working for me to have this wart medicine on the exit table in the living room. And I'd even say it with a smile, and I can already feel him smiling. And you like, oh, here it comes. What do you want? And that's fine. He can have any feelings he wants when I do this, okay? Because I've already asked permission to share. And I'll say, how about I know, this is what I know about you, sweetheart. I've been with you 25 years. I know that you need a, a visual reminder. And this, you really want to get rid of this wart because he really does, okay? So what if we used one of the little jars? He has like six different things he does in his process. And we leave that one thing there because we have a little brush there for our kitty too and our channel changers are there. What if we leave one thing for the wart medicine that's your visual reminder? Can you make that work? Would that work for you? He's like, all right. He doesn't want to, okay? And here's the thing. It's okay that he doesn't want to. He's, he's gifting me. He's honoring me because he knows this is really important to me. And, you know, it, it's not important that I tell him how creepy out I am, about, how creeped out I am about it. That is, a, that is non necessary communication, okay? Because that, that can easily go into shame, can easily go into blame. I can go harsh really quick, like, that's so creepy. Ugh, get your stuff out of here. It's so creepy. And that does not work, okay? I've tried it, believe me. <laughs> it doesn't work, okay? All right, so then we got that. I know what I want. I'm asking for what I want rather than what I don't want. I've already done number four in a little way, in a little bit. Here, let me. Sorry, let me wipe my nose. Sorry, guys. For those just joining, we're talking about getting your emotional needs met. We're on number four. For those just joining as well, I put all the notes up as soon as the lecture is over. So number four goes into a little more detail about talking about the real behaviors that are affecting your relationship and the real behavior of that wart medicine <laughs> on the exit table. I know it's a ridiculous example, but it works, right? Um, rather than attacking his character that he leaves creepy stuff on the, <laughs> the table. You got it? It's really about common areas, cleanliness. He does not need to hear me say that that's creepy. Got it? So if you really want to have a change or really want to have understanding or be understood and be respected with dignity and respect and foster that intimacy, focus on the behavior, not on the character of the person because that easily goes into shame or blame. And you can sound really harsh, right? And when I say harsh, I mean inappropriate anger where it's blame energy. I know you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I know you know. I know you know. I know that you know that I know that you know. Okay? All right. And then the fifth part of this is specifically asking for what you need. And I was very specific. Can we leave the one little jar on the table? And, um, and that's a very specific thing that he can do. You know, sometimes after these lectures, okay, I get messages like, oh my gosh, why do you work so hard? Why do you, like, oh my gosh, is this even worth it? You bet your sweet butt it is. You betcha it is. 
because I adore my husband. And anybody that's in your life that's very close to you, you take the things that work and the things that don't work, it kind of goes together. And one thing that I've learned about marriage in particular with, or with, when you're with a partner is that it takes investment of time and energy. It takes an investment. And my husband is worth it. And I'm worth it. I'm worth going through hoops to get to the goal, the depth of intimacy, the depth of feeling deeply loved and cherished. Yep. And I hear you. And so, Sandy, that's a great question. That's a topic for another day because tonight's about being with someone you deeply love and care about, right? And that's and someone that's only contacting you when they need something um, and only their way, that would not be a deep, intimate relationship. You got it? And, and I'll answer, give you a fast answer to that. That's, that is your issue, whoever has it. It's not the other person's. Because that's a boundary issue. Like, wow, they call up, they need something. Wow, Joe, you know, this is the third time you call me this month, and I feel really perturbed because every time you call me, you want something. And that doesn't feel good to me, so I'm going to decline the request. Yeah, I don't know where to go here. This is, you can literally say this. I just know that it doesn't feel good that every time you call me, you want something, and I kind of feel used if I were to be really authentic. Got it? Okay, something like that. That's a tough one too. That's a tough one to do. Making sense? Yeah, Dolores, I'm so with you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's it tonight. That's all I got. Um, I'm gonna go into giving a prize away here, giving away masks. Also, last week we did a hodgepodge night where I got a lot of topics and had great discussions with everybody. The 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 one topic that I got the most requests about or surrounding that I didn't even realize is around sexual abuse healing or sexual assault healing, whether it's covert, overt. Some of you may be thinking, well, what's covert and overt? Yeah, I know someone that's been sexually abused and how can I be a better friend, a better partner, a better lover? I'm gonna do um, a session on sexual abuse healing next week. Never really done that one right out. I have a lot of experience. I've done a lot of work around this topic. I am a sexual abuse survivor. And um, I think I'm, next week I'm going to make it very basic and very simple to give you some simple things to say or to ask for, especially if you're on this journey. It's such a precious, sacred journey, sexual abuse healing or sexual assault healing. It, there, there's so many parts to it and there's so many, it's, it's a huge continuum. So I'll be really focusing on sexual abuse healing next week and um, I'm sure I'll do many topics on it, not in succession and in increments um, through the next year because we, we set the agenda for the next year, okay? So next week is gonna be sexual abuse healing. Be beneficial for if you've survived it or if you know someone that's gone through sexual assault or sexual abuse, okay? All right, so who wants to win a prize tonight? So the prizes are masks. The caveat is you have to be in the U.S. because we only ship to the U.S. Um, not on our website as well, but when you are from another country and you're purchasing on our website, we send you the cost, what it is to ship it internationally. Shipping costs have gone sky high, especially internationally. And so that hence why we are, when we do giveaways, we do them just here in the U.S. So you have to be in the U.S. Okay, perfect. Got it, Dolores. I get it. I know. You are so welcome. You guys rock. Hey, Laura. It's so nice to see you. Aw, thank you, Jenny. Okay, so who wants to win? Okay, perfect, here's how you win. It's not too scientific, but I found over time that it works the best. And I'm gonna give you something to put in um, the comments, not shooting up. You know how like you can put little hearts that float up on a live, or you can actually make a comment. These are for comments. I want you to put some kind of flower in the comment, no matter what flower it is. And let's say number 11 is the winner tonight. The 11th, <laughs> I'm with you, Sarah. The 11th person who puts a flower in comments wins, and you must be in the U.S. And I'll count them off because I go by my feed. I know everybody's feed is a little bit different. So the 11th person putting a flower in the comments is going to win these two prizes. Penny, I'm going to count you as number one, and I'm going to ask you actually put a little emoticon. I know you're writing in words. Do it real fast with an actual flower. Robin is two. Sharon is three. Right, number three. Anna Maria is four. Laura is five. Laura is five. We're going to number 11. 
Penny is six. Kathy is seven. What a beautiful flower, too, Kathy. Kathy is seven. We're going up to 11. Cindy <laughs> is eight. Flower works. Teresa is nine. Teresa is nine. Sandy is 10. Rena, it's you. It's you, Rena. Okay, Rena Peterson, what you're gonna do is you are, you're welcome, Sandra. You can message us here, you US address, message us right here on Facebook. It's just me and Hailey that run the office, so no one else will see your address. When you put in your address, be sure to put in your email, okay? Because then you, we don't use your email. I don't like getting emails that I never sign up for, and I'm sure you don't either. Um, we use your email to track the packaging, okay? All right, next week, surviving sexual abuse, sexual abuse healing, that's gonna be the topic. Thanks you guys for playing. And um, I'm, as soon as I hang up, I'll put up all the notes. And it was a joy to be with you tonight. Big love. A couple more things. If you find this broadcast helpful, share. Anytime you share us on Project Forgive, you make a difference for us with folks like General Motors. Because they go, dang, Dr. Sean, you're reaching some people. And I'm like, I know. People care about the conversation of forgiveness. And so they continue sponsoring us, continue supporting what we're doing. And look, people are already congratulating you, Lena. That's so cool. All right. Anything you feel power, empowered to share, please share us. It makes such a difference. And commenting, too. When I put up questions and you're inspired, you'll put a comment in. Please do so. It makes a huge difference. Big love. I'll see you guys soon. And um, have the, a beautiful rest of your holiday if you're in the U.S. celebrating Labor Day.